Hello, my name is Graeme Moss. I'm Principal Building Survey for the Australian Building Codes Board. This video is an update on the NCC referencing system, also known as the NCC structure, for the Building Code of Australia. That's volumes one and two of the NCC. The best way to describe the new referencing system is to compare it with the old one. And so here I have volume one, NCC 2019, on this slide. As you can see at this high level, the structure starts with section A, the governing requirements. That's where you've got the classifications in A6, uh, evidence of suitability in A5, that sort of thing. And then comes the technical provisions, starting with structure at section B, fire resistance in section C, and all the way down to section J, energy efficiency. Note on this slide for this moment that section I has some asterisks there. Section I is blank. It's been like this since 2014, which was when we took maintenance out of the code. And we put those asterisks in as a placeholder so that section J didn't suddenly become section I. And then after these technical provisions and the governing requirements, you find the schedules, where the definitions, state and territory variations and things like that are found. So that's 2019 volume one high level structure. Compare this to now NCC 2022 in the new structure. Now, at this level, not much has changed. In fact, the only real change is that special use buildings has moved from section H in the 2019 structure into, 20, into section I in the 2022 structure. What this has done is allowed section H to be designated for housing, and that's volume two, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but we'll cover the volume one amendments first. And as, as is the same today, then the schedules come after these technical provisions found from B through to J. Uh, and so there's not much, not much change really at this high level. However, the changes come when you start to drill into the parts of Volume 1 because Volume 1 uses the new section part type clause referencing system. Volume 2 also uses this same referencing system, section part type clause, SPTC, but like I said, we'll talk about Volume 2 in a moment. So Volume 1 at the part level has had some quite significant changes in the referencing system on account of this new system. And the, perhaps the best way to sh explain how this section part type clause system works is to show you an example from the NCC 2019 translated into 2022. So I'll do that in a moment, starting with the next slide. But what I want to point out is that along the way, you should pick up some tips and tricks about how to find what you're after in the new system. You might come to NCC 2022 with the old reference in your mind. I wanted to give you some tips and tricks to help you find that old reference, how that's been translated to the new reference. And like I said, the best way to do that is to start with an example. So here is E4.5 exit signs as specified in NCC 2019. Now this is how the existing or the 2019 referencing system works. We know that E4.5 exit signs is in section E because under the current numbering system, E4.5 starts with the letter E. Next comes part. We know that E4.5 exit signs is in part four because after the E comes the number four. I think you can see where this is going. Next is type, SPTC, section part type clause. We're up to type. Now, under the current system, you'll know that this is a deemed to satisfy provision, E4.5, because there's no letter after the E. If it was a performance requirement, so consider EP 4.2, that's the relevant performance requirement for E 4.5. We know that EP 4.2 is a performance requirement because there is a P under the current system after, after the E. Also, there's verification methods in the current system. We'd know that it would be a verification method if it was EV. So for instance, EV 4.1 is a verification method in NCC 2019. Because there's no letter there, we know it's a deemed to satisfy provision, so just note that for now. And next, in the current system, E4.5, uh, the last, last numeral in that designation is five, because it's the fifth clause in part four of section E. That's why it's E4.5. So that's how the current system works. This is how it translates to the new system. Moving from E4.5 in the NCC 2019, Going across to NCC 2022, we have E4D5, section part type clause. So E4.5 becomes E4D5. Now, exit signs, this provision translates quite tidily. 
uh, it makes the referencing system, the new referencing system, look quite easy, really. Just take the, take the dot away and put in the letter. D for deemed to satisfy, P for performance requirement, etc. Now, there's been other changes for NCC 2022 that mean that it doesn't always translate this tidily. For example, there's a little trick that depends on where the performance requirements are. Here's something you probably already know, but re never really noticed. And that is that sometimes in Volume 1, the performance requirements are at the beginning of the section. And sometimes in Volume 1, the performance requirements are found at the beginning of the part. So for example, Section C, uh, the performance requirements are at the beginning of the section. There's three parts in Section C, C1, fire resistance, C2, compartmentation, C3, protection of openings. Now all these parts are related to one another, they're to do with fire performance. And those performance requirements are all related to one another. These three parts are all related to the same fire-related same fire related performance requirements. And that makes sense, and that's fine. But consider Section F, for example. So Section F is all about health and amenity, but health and amenity is quite a broad subject. You've got toilet provisions in F2, you've got noise attenuation in F5. Now, F2 has its own performance requirements to do with the toilet provision, and F5 has its own separate performance requirements to do with noise attenuation. Now, although they're all about health and amenity, they're different subject areas and therefore have different performance requirements, and that's why those performance requirements are found at the beginning of each part. And of course, that's fine because it's just health and amenity. It all meets that particular section. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, it's because where the performance requirements are found at the beginning of the part, we've had to actually create a new part to accommodate those performance requirements and also verification methods if there are verification methods for that particular part. So for example, section C again, fire resistance, we've got the performance requirements and verification methods in a brand new part C1. And of course what that has done is meant that the part number in the referencing system has bumped up by one. So C1.14 ancillary elements, uh, as referred to in NCC 2019, becomes C2 D14 ancillary elements in NCC 2022 because the part number has been bumped up by one. And if you're still lost, Control F is your friend. You can do a search in the new NCC 2022 because we've included the old reference, this 2019 reference, next to the title in every new provision in NCC 2022. Now, the specifications. In Volume 1, the specifications are now all numbered. It starts at number 1 and goes into the 40s. I have on this particular slide some of the more popular specifications listed here. For example, Spec C1.1 is now Spec 5. Now, I'm afraid I haven't got any translation tricks for you here, but we do have a list of NCC specifications at the front of Volume 1 that you might find useful. And of course, that search function that I mentioned just now also works because we still have the old clause numbers in uh, next to the title of every part of the clause for NCC 2022. Now that covers the changes in the referencing system and the structure for Volume 1. Now I'm going to show you Volume 2. Volume 2 has had a big makeover, and this is what Volume 2 looks like today. We start with Section 1, the governing requirements, which is more or less the same as Section A in Volume 1. Then we have Section 2 in the 2019 system for Volume 2, and Section 2 contains the performance provisions. This is where the performance requirements and the verification methods live. And then we have Section 3, which is mostly the acceptable construction practice, and all the parts are listed here from 3.0 structural provisions down to 3.12 energy efficiency. And after that we have the schedules, including the definitions and state and territory variations, much state and territory additions, much like Volume 1. So that's how Volume 2 looks today. Like I've said, we've given Volume 2 a large makeover, and that's because for 2022, we've picked up most of the acceptable construction practice out of Section 3 and transferred that into a new ABCB reference document, the ABCB Housing Provision Standard. Think of this as being like a reference standard, like perhaps an Australian standard. It's not in the NCC, but it's caught up by the NCC. 
It's not our reference document. We already have three ABCB reference standards. There's the protocol for structural software, the standard for construction in flood hazard areas. We've also got the standard for NATURS heating and cooling load limits. These are freely available ABCB standards that are on our website today and referenced by the National Construction Code. So the idea of an ABCB standard isn't new. However, this is our biggest one ever. It's over 400 pages, and that's what you get when you pick up most of Volume 2 and move it into a reference standard. As a result, Volume 2 itself has become a lot thinner. You still have the governing requirements, that's Section A, and then you have that Section H that I mentioned earlier. And each of these parts, the parts in Section H, have the relevant performance requirements, the verification methods, if there are any, and then you have these deemed to satisfy provisions that are enacting the housing provisions by referencing them. Now these particular provisions might also enact a referenced Australian standard. I'll show you an example on the next slide. But certainly this is how the ABCV housing provision standard is called up by NCC 2022 Volume 2. Now some of you might be thinking, okay, when it comes to Volume 2 today, I, I rarely find myself in Section 2. I usually just go to Section 3 and that's where I find my deemed to satisfy provisions within the pages of the code, the acceptable construction practice. And you think to yourself, well, because of this, I'm probably going to be finding myself picking up the housing provision standard and I don't really have to pick up NCC 2022 Volume 2 because I'm not using the verification methods or the performance requirements. Now that may be the case and you, may, you are going to find yourself in the housing provision standard a lot, but please note this very carefully, that the ABCB housing provision standard must be read in conjunction with NCC 2022 Volume 2. I'll demonstrate this by showing you H1D5 masonry in Volume 2. So H1D5 subclause 1 is the new part of Volume 2 that deals with masonry veneer. Now this is one of those application clauses that I was speaking about earlier. Note that this application clause allows you to use the reference standards, AS3700 or AS4773 series, and this is the case today, there's no technical change here. Or, in, or in, as an alternative to these, you can use part 5.2 of the ABCB housing provision standard. This is how it's enacted by volume two. But what I want to highlight on this slide is the limitations that for using the standard are contained here in Volume 2. Now these limitations aren't new. These are 3.3.5.1 in NCC 2019. However, these limitations are integral to using the provisions of the standard, but you won't find them in the standard. So, as you can see, you need to keep Volume 2 at hand when you're using the new ABCB housing provision standard. But of course, in a digital environment, that's easy. You just click between the two documents, that's fine. Now, don't worry, if you do pick up the standard first, there are reminders in that standard itself to point you back to Volume 2. So here is Part 5.2, masonry veneer inside the standard. We've just been passed here, we've just been sent here from Volume 2. But have a look at Subclause 1. This subclause is reminding us that this particular part of the housing provision standard is subject to the limitations found elsewhere, that is back in Volume 2, H1, H1D5-1C. Note also that 5.2.1 subclause 2 is saying that you don't have to use these housing provision standard if you're complying with AS3700 or the AS4773 series. It's reminding you that if you're using the reference documents as acceptable construction manuals, as we call them today, then you don't need to use these particular provisions inside the housing provision standard. So what I'm saying, if you do pick up the standard first, you're going to find links back to volume 2 when it matters. Now a question that we're often asked about the new referencing system is why are we doing this? Well, there's a few reasons, but in a nutshell, the new referencing system is necessary to achieve digitisation. Put simply, the existing referencing system is not machine readable, and a machine readable referencing system is necessary to achieve digitisation. Now digitisation is something that the board and the office of the ABCB are committed to, and therefore it was necessary to introduce this new referencing system. This video has been a brief overview of the new referencing system for NCC 2022, Volumes 1 and 2. If you do require further information, please refer to our website, abcb.gov.au.